resignado, sufrí de mi dolor. Adiós mi vida, para siempre, que la gloria del pasado se acabó.
have any questions? No, she was in Hamilton. Party, something that a lot of people said for many, many, many years would never happen. You know, this place would not exist next year, and so on and so forth. And yet, 25 years, quarter of a century of broadcasting here out of the University of Toronto. And uh, it's great to see some really good uh, old pals. I've been here for 23 and a half years, like 88. And I'm meeting people that were here before that. So it's great to see that. Ken Stower is uh, the station manager right now, as well as the program director of the station. I'm the president of the board of directors. So if you have any problems, we're the guys to talk to. <laughs> Just like to introduce Ken now, and uh, you have a few words to say. Thank you, Steve. And uh, I want to thank everyone for making the, the time to attend today. And first and foremost, uh, for those people here that represent the listeners of CIUT, I want to thank you First and foremost, who are the listeners? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, because everything we do is for you. So thank you very much for your uh, ongoing support uh, over the past 25 years. And for all that wonderful uh, music and spoken word content that you've heard in the past uh, and the present is due to uh, a cast of thousands of volunteers uh, that have come through CIUT since its inception in 1987 right through to the present and I'd like to thank all of the, the uh, past and present volunteers for all of their great contributions over the years. Also uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, our partners here today. I'd like to thank Paul Templin who is the event manager here at our house. In fact it was he that planted the seed that uh, brought CIUT into Hart House. He was aware a number of years ago that 91 St. George Street, our former home, was going to be demolished to make way for the Robinson School of uh, 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 Expansion. Uh, so he put the bug in the ear of uh, then Borden, Louise Cowan, and we went from there dealing with uh, UAP space management. Two and a half years of negotiation, and we're here, and we'd like to thank Hart House and for uh, bringing us into this establishment. Also, I'd like to thank uh, we have some former uh, management types here uh, from over the uh, years at CIUT. There's the first one I can see. Uh, Mr. Larry Sait, station manager, 1987-1988. be a few gaps. 1995-1999 program director, Mr. Mopadine. And I don't know if he's arrived yet, but uh, station manager Chris DaCosta uh, from 1989-1990. He was going to be here today. I'm not sure he's present as of yet. Also, I'd like to uh, acknowledge David Ackerman, who was the station manager 1993 to 1995. He did an excellent job. Also, uh, Phil Sagan, 1983 to 1987. And Nylon Pereira, who was the, or Nylon Pereira, who was the program director on four occasions from the late 80s to the year 2002. Uh, I'll also like to, uh, in remembrance, uh, uh, pass along the names of uh, former volunteers that unfortunately have passed away, uh, but we uh, certainly will never forget their contributions, and they include uh, Mr. Curtis Bailey, Sean Cansfield, Bruce Cattle, Rick Fielding, Billy Green, Sam Guha, Mervyn Hassanali, Serge Jacob, Lee Swaxer, and Steve Starchev. Fortunately, we have not had to add to that list in the last five years, so that's probably a good thing. Uh, just like to uh, implore you all to uh, have your pictures taken outside and 
And that, we're trying to collect a, a database of information for the volunteers, the, the listeners, everybody, any, anybody that's been associated with the station. It's uh, crucial now that we start to get our archives together. So I'm working on that and we'll continue to do so now that I'm a, a retired gentleman. Uh, the other thing is that um, 25 years, so many people, so many echelons of, of, of volunteers. Uh, what I mean by echelons is like different groups, you know, that were here from the early 90s or the late 90s or, you know, so it's it's a fantastic thing to see a lot of those people all together here in one room at the same time. And it takes something like this, the 25th anniversary, to uh, actually accomplish that. And I'm sure that everybody that's that's here that has volunteered at CIT can write at least a chapter of some weird and wonderful experience that they had at 91 St. George or even at the new facilities here at Hart House. And um, I mean, I remember the day that, uh, well, I can tell you, <laughs> that I got locked out of the studio. Um, Colin Gray was locked in the studio, but the thing was, there was no lock on the door. So how did he get locked? And we couldn't get in to start my program. Uh, Ken Starr was there, he could, he could vouch for this. We actually had to take the big door off <laughs> and get Colin out and get me in. And of course, I get in and I'm panting, you know, get on air, and of course, the listener doesn't know a thing. Not a thing. So. So many instances like that have happened, and I'm sure that you're probably telling each other a lot of these stories now. So if anybody can write these down and email us at the station, uh, 25 years at, uh, of CIT at gmail.com is how to get a hold of us that way. And we're gonna collate a lot of this stuff. So that's really, really something that we hope that you will do for us. Yeah, okay, I shall do that. I'd just like to acknowledge the board of directors as well. Um, the last two years have been a really difficult time. I think uh, a lot of people know what happened towards the end of the Brian Virtual area at the station here. And that was, we were robbed of a lot of money and uh, we had to do a lot of work. And it wasn't for the, the board of directors and the staff, uh, a lot of stuff that the volunteers and the listeners would have been dealing with would have been very unpleasant. So I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the staff for the great job that they did during this time. It was very, very hard. we just come through it uh, with flying colors. This last past year has been a great year financially for CIT. And uh, we're getting our, our books in order in a big way. So that was really great. And the board of directors are, I'm the president of the board of directors. So uh, from there we go to Jeffrey Borkin, Don McLean, Tim Birmingham, Mary Wines, or the Weeds rather, Elizabeth Wood, Rita O'Brien, Danielle Sandu, Clara Ho, and Stephanie Abrams are your board of directors. So. How warming and heartfelt that was to, to get around and applause. And back in the 90s when I was on the board, we would just get the booze. So things have changed at CIT. I'd also like to thank Michelle Johnson, who led uh, coordinating the event today. Big thanks to Michelle, to Benny, Rose, and Talia, Eric and Sam, who helped us well. And I'd also like to thank all of the wonderful talent that is going to perform for you today, and those Caballeros del Sun have uh, already performed, but we still have Christine Schmidt, Julian Foth, the award-winning uh, blues artist, will be performing for you later. And as well as Memory House. And this group I'd like to bring up right now, we kick things off in this room, if you're ready. There's a group that we've had an association with over the past uh, couple of years that we look forward to continuing with them. Please welcome uh, for their first of two performances this afternoon, the Canadian Space Opera Company. Have a great time.
going to uh, air here uh, hopefully uh, sometime this spring. Uh, and we're going to give you a little taste of that uh, show by doing a uh, couple sketches from that.
and it's in the uh, Jamalagasa language. That's the language people speak in Madagascar. And the rhythm and the beat and everything. So, uh,
God bless you, AT. In the Canadian Space Opera Company present Radio Brain Freeze. Oh, my brain! <coughs> Meanwhile, in a trendy uptown restaurant. <coughs> Remember what I told you about my dad? He's from another time. I I'm not going to provoke him into a fight, but if he says anything, I, I just can't let it slide. Please, just stick to safe topics. Here he comes. How's my precious angel? I brought you a present. Kinder surprise! <laughs> my favorite. And this must be a PhD. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Applepapple. Katie tells me that you vote NDP. I never met one of your kind before. Uh, Daddy, I vote NDP. I'm certain that's just a phase. Uh, so, Katie tells me you're retired. Well, retired's not the word I choose. 45 years of making pepper mills and I get forced out by free trade. Well, you know, free trade is a perfect example of capitalism run amok in the mad pursuit to produce... Yep, yep. 45 years of sweat and toil only to get underpriced by a bunch of fish eaters and raffia hats. Pardon me? Well, I'm sorry if I've offended your sense of political correctness, but these whim whammers just aren't playing fair. I mean, I'm all for a level playing field, but... Uh, uh, new topic. Um, Carlin's going to Mexico next month to speak to a group of businessmen about fair trade. Oh, Mexico. Beautiful part of the world. Lovely people. Great food, too. It's a little southwest of Mexico that you gotta watch out for. Damn finheads. Let me tell you, you better sleep with one eye open if you ever, ever end up in that nation of fumigators. Dad! I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the term uh, finhead. Finheads, you know, uh, staffs, uh, cat keepers. Dad, please. I still don't get it. But where's that waitress? Um, Dad, why don't you check and see what's going on? Good idea. I'm going to look in the kitchen and make sure there aren't any knee flappers in there. They always use too much Mrs. Dash in the food. Don't encourage him. Mom. Ask him about Fheads. I just want to know who or what a Finhead is. He's coming back. Please, don't get him started. Ah, oh, honey, I don't know why you pick these kinds of places. There's a there's a table of bridge cobblers back there. Where? Ow! I just wanted to see you. Uh, so, uh, Dad, uh, where are you and Mom going for holidays this year? My mom has her heart set on Singapore, and you know I love that city. Such a rich and diverse meeting of Chinese, Indian, and Malay culture. Well, not that I want to be a cultural tourist. Not like those damn cheese processors. They think they can come here and then expect everybody else to follow their ways. Why, if one of those Woo! arm waivers came in here, I'd stick my fingers right in his eye sockets. Oh, come on. Carl! Oh, no, no, I think I've almost figured out who the cheese processors are. I'll tell you who they are. They're a bunch of cotton-wearing, whippet-walking trampolines. That's what they are. Are they Albanians? What? I'll have you know that some of my best friends are Albanians, and I will not have you comparing them to trampolines. Oh, no, no, I meant Americans. Katie? I'm rather alarmed to find that you've taken up with a racist. What? You're the one who's been going on about cheese flappers and knee processors. It's cheese processors and knee flappers. Uh, Carl, I'm seeing another side of you, an ugly side. I think we need some time apart. Oh, freaking out, Burtons. And now, a word from our sponsor. Colonel Mills, proud makers of slightly above average household products. Ladies, are you feeling tired, lonely, and unloved? Well, before you decide to end it all by throwing yourself in front of the 317 Express from Larchmont or the 322 Local from Larchmont, depending on whether today is a normal business day or a statutory holiday, why not try new Colonel Mills Little Missy Vanishing Cream? Little Missy not only removes those unwanted wrinkles, it renders them, and you, totally invisible. Not only allowing you to escape your drab home, but to also start a new life on an enchanted tropical island surrounded by virile young men named Juan. Hola! That's Colonel Mills' Little Missy Vanishing Cream when it's time for a change. Are you a ten-year-old? Are you at a sleepover? Do you want to be scared out of your skin? Then sit back 
and get ready to squirm with a bone-chilling tale from your best friend's teenage brother, Steve. Man, it's snowing pretty hard. There's already, like, ten centimeters of snow. Kinda makes me sad to know that every time it snows like this, it means some kid is gonna die. Didn't your weirdo teachers show you that film script about the snow plow? It's a wonder you're not already dead. You're only alive today because I used to walk you to school. But now that I go to Central Tech, you kids are alone and unprotected. See, what happens is, the first snowplow comes along and it creates a snowbank. And babies like you like to walk along on top of the snowbank. And that's when the second snowplow comes along. The driver can't see you, because it's snowing, man. And BAM! You're dead. The fallen snow covers your body, so your parents can't find you. And you don't die from your horrible internal bleeding, no. You die from hypothermia. And the worst part? They won't find your body until spring. See, only children are the only kids who can survive a snowplow attack because they can dig themselves out. Only children have to shovel the driveway all by themselves. So they build up powerful arm muscles and a tolerance to the cold. So even if they can't use their mangled legs, they can still tunnel out using only their fingers and, and, pull their twisted bodies out behind them. Speaking of which, it's time for old Steve to shovel some snow. Unless you boys want to toughen up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the court of a mighty king. I'm old King Cole, and I'm a merry old soul. I've enjoyed my fight, but I've enjoyed my bowl. Now bring me my Fiddler's Three. Bring forth the Fiddler's Three. We are the Fiddler's Three. But uh, there are only two of you. Oh, the Fiddler's Three is just our name. Yes, Fiddler's Two just didn't have the same sing. But, but I chose your group because I wanted three fiddlers. Three is my lucky number. But, Your Majesty, I can play two fiddles at once. Well, I hired the fiddlers three, not the three fiddles. Do I have to contact the Better Business Bureau? Well, I'll tell you what, Your Majesty, we'll, uh, we'll give you a discount. Well, certainly. For our merry king, we'll knock off, say, 25%. But, but that's only one quarter of the price. Since one out of three fiddlers is absent, shouldn't you knock off one third of the price? Oh, but sire, one third of a dollar is three 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 point three 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 etc etc cents. Right. It doesn't resolve mathematically. Twenty-five percent is much easier. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll call my executioner and tell him to cut off just seventy-five percent of your heads. Executioner! Executioner! <laughs> Is there a fiddler in the house? We have an immediate opening for a fiddler here. <laughs> we provide the fiddle only slightly used. Uh, anybody? Anybody? It's, it's a matter of life or death. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I, I'm really not in the mood anymore. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Our good old King Paul is no longer a merry old soul. You should be ashamed. We apologize, Your Majesty. We didn't intend to mislead you. Well, the name was just a marketing gimmick. We never meant to hurt anyone. Yes, yes. It's all right. Just go. Uh, tell me what's that? Make up for it. We could persuade our cousin to bring in his big dance troupe. Oh, yes. They're wonderful, Your Majesty. They're known as the Ten Lords are leaping. Dare I ask, how many of them are there? Oh, ten of them, Your Majesty. Ten dancers, absolutely. And three of them are very attractive ladies. <laughs> so you're saying that three of the ten leaping lords are actually ladies? Ladies are not lords. It's, it's scandalous. 
I'm going to pass an edict about entertainment names in this kingdom. <laughs> You're a bit of a nitpicker, aren't you, my lord? I am calling my executioner. Executioner! Executioner! All right, we're going, we're going. Uh, is there any point at all in my calling for the Jackson Five? They just added another brother. Oh, hell, I'm going to bed. And now, a word from Mr. Advice Man, providing practical solutions to real-world problems. Dear Mr. Advice Man, raccoons keep breaking into my garage and ripping up my garbage. <laughs> what should I do? Mr. Advice Man says that turnabout is fair play. Find out where your raccoons live, then late at night sneak into their nest or lair, or whatever they call it, and mess around with their stuff. Ask them loudly and clearly whether they are enjoying this dose of their own medicine. Since raccoons do not excel at verbal communication, you will likely be soundly bitten and forced to endure an extensive round of rabies shots. All but you will have made your point. The raccoons will not mess with you again because they will realize that you are one crazy badass mofo. Oh, you're welcome. And have a nice day. That was a word from Mr. Advice Man. Real problems, real solutions. And now, once again, the Canadian Space Opera Company would like to apologize. This week, C. Spock apologizes to Leonard Cohen, Lila Goy, Hugo Chavez, The Old Spaghetti Factory. Butterboy. The doorman at the King Edward. J.K. Rowling. The Central Intelligence Agency. Yusuf Aslam. And Michael J. Fox. We're sorry. We never thought the nickname Douche Monkey would stick. <laughs> CIUT celebrate their 25th uh, anniversary, and uh, we'd like to remind you to listen for our show, Radio Brain Freeze. Oh, my brain! And it's going to be coming soon to 89.5 FM. Thanks very much, everybody.